Esselamu Aleyküm ve Rahmetullah. Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi şrahli sadri ve yessinli emri ve ahlul uqdeten min lisani yefkahu qavli. Ve ceallî veziran min ehli Harun ahi üştüd bihi ezri ve eşrikı fi emri. كي نسبحك كثيرا ونذكرك كثيرا إنك كنت بنا بصيرا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وإرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وإرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربنا وفير لنا وارحمنا وينت خير الراحمين ve sallallahumma ala Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ve etba'ihi ve sellem elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin amin we have been studying the different phases of the life of the prophet Moses now we are uh, going to study the phase which is after the exodus from Egypt and going through a spiritual training which will take 40 years and they crossed under the leadership or in a miraculous demonstration of Moses' uh, leadership and now they established that uh, Moses is not an ordinary person who is employed by God and helped by God, backed by God. They were sure of it because they have seen the miracles demonstrated at his hand. Of course, the creator is God but God, the miracles showed that Moses was employed and supported by the creator of the universe. It was an evidence for them. Now, as we see in the conditions of this world, uh, that the uh, that the prophet Moses thought, okay, they had their confidence in me, so they know that what I'm telling them is just from God. As God taught me, I am uh, passing on this uh, message that I received from God to the people. He thought that the confidence was established in the hearts of the people about his messengership. But we have to pay attention to the reality that uh, miracles are only good to prepare the minds of the people, feelings of the people to listen to the messenger, messengers, and take their message seriously as revealed by God to them. We have to be aware that miracles alone cannot make somebody feel completely confident in the reality of the message. It is just an invitation it is just a security that they should listen and listen to the message and take the message seriously into their heart and digest it. What we understand from the following message, we will understand from the following verses of the Quran that people were not satisfied with the message because they have not really geared into the message. The message was not 
digested by the minds and feelings of the people. Only putting a trust in one's virtue and saying that this is a, really a trustworthy man. And to seeing that some miraculous activities are going on in his uh, life, admiring him and saying that this person is employed by God. Is it enough for a person to digest the message in his heart? We will see whether it is enough or not in the following verses. We have to be also careful about the lessons that we are learning from these kind of verses, that if you see a man who is really an honest man, okay, he never tells the truth, okay, He's a trustworthy person, fine, very good, okay. It doesn't mean that we will get the message from him and educate ourselves. Completely confident in the message. So, putting the trust in the personality of the person, of a man, of a, of a, a human being, is not enough for me to be educated, trained in the teachings that this person is teaching me. Miracles are necessary in order to have the confidence in our trust in the person that is not telling a lie, he is employed by God, he is a, he is a teacher, for me, I, I really trust him, but it doesn't mean that I have learned his teaching. For example, saying that this is a man who knows, let's say, chemistry the best, okay? It doesn't mean that if I am, uh, if I am really convinced about him as to be the best chemistry, the chemist in the world because everybody says, this is the man, this is the man who, who knows everything, okay? It does not necessarily mean that I have learned chemistry from him and I am convinced about his teaching. I am convinced about his honesty his status, but not his teaching. We, we are going to learn uh, the difference between this. So those people who claim that the prophet must show the miracles in the Quran, it is narrated on many occasions, not only the uh, concerning the life of the prophet Muhammad, but also about other prophetic narrations. The Quran keeps narrating that the, prophet, the people who oppose the messengers, they ask the messengers, come on, you have to show us something extraordinary so that we will uh, understand you are a truth teller, tr trustworthy man. And the Quran says, no, the prophet is not going to demonstrate your miracles. Even if he did, he, he wouldn't believe anyways. What does it mean? Some people, some experts who are uh, experts on hadith or uh, religious studies, maybe the Quranic studies as well, they say, look, the prophet was asked by Quraysh, why don't you show us some miracles so that we will trust you? And the prophet says, well, I don't know. It is up to God and I'm just here to convey the message. It is not up to me that I will create a miracle. And the Quran says, look, they are asking you to perform miracles before them. Tell them that even the prophet 
I demonstrated a miracle. Still, you would have believed it. You would say it's it's a kind of magic. Just you cheat us by showing something extraordinary. Why? Because they are not ready to digest the message, think about the content of the message itself, rather than looking at the message of uh, the prophet, people look at the virtue of the man. Yes, the, the man must be the person who brings the message, must be a trustworthy person, but it is not enough. That is what the missing in the minds of the believers, I, I notice nowadays, Prophet was, the Prophet Muhammad was the trustworthy man, trustworthy man, correct, it should be, so yeah, it must be the reality, correct. What is it to do with you? Yes, you will, uh, you will put a trust in him, but it must be a a beginning, a means of taking his message seriously and studying his message. It must be just a means of pro, uh, putting in him your trust in him and so that you will take the message seriously and study it. We may also be doing the same, repeating the same mistake in our life. I believe that Prophet Muhammad was a very trustworthy man. Everybody was trusting, trusting him, and no one said uh, about uh, anything against him. So he wasn't a liar. Okay. Is it? enough to believe that the prophet, the Muhammad was a prophet? No, it is just a beginning, it is just an invitation. It is necessary, but it is an invitation only. I think we have to realize this difference, so that I will take the message he brought to me seriously and study it earnestly what it is saying, so that I will be convinced in the content of the message, rather than in man alone. That is the missing point nowadays that I hear from people. The, and talking about uh, the Prophet Muhammad. So, let's go to the verse mentioning about the subject. So, فَقَالَ إِنَّا قَدْ فَتَّنَّا قَوْمَكَ مِنْ بَعْدِكَ وَأَضَلَّهُمُ السَّعْمَرِ Now, Do you remember uh, the this phase of the story? Sorry, what's going on? Yeah. The Moses, if you remember, Moses hurried, left his people behind to be in the presence of God, it means concentrate his own obudiya, worship. We studied this phase of the story last week. And God, if you like, we can go and see the verse here. the verse 83, eight and what has caused you to rush ahead of your people, O Moses? Because Moses came to the prophet, it means he was cons uh, cons concentrating on his personal responsibility. 
may be personal relationship with God. But the prophets and the followers of the prophet should not only consider themselves, but also the people. Take notice of the needs of the people as far as dis uh, dis distributing, publishing the message. Not only personal concern, no. We have to take care of the needs of others as well. As we know that we have to take care of the needs of others as far as, for example, they are hungry. I have plenty of food. I have to share the food, correct. And their spirit is hungry. I have to take care of the, the ideas the evidence that satisfies me and I have to share this evidence with them. So if we neglect taking care of the society, the other people who are, who are in need of the message in order to feel secure in their being and be confident in their existence so that they will be in good terms in their relationship with God, who, who, and then they can put their trust in him only. So, when Moses, uh, of course, excuse me, let me complete this verse. And he answered, uh, look at verse 84, he answered, they are treading in my footsteps while I have been hastening unto you. It means uh, the Moses in the example, this example, uh, Moses' example is the example for me as well. So when we think that oh, people really uh, trusted me, I am an honest man, okay. Then I will ask people, come and follow me. Whatever I do, you will do. No, I have to teach. If I am an honest man, I have to teach the people around me which kind of understanding made me feel, made me an honest person so that I will teach the message to them in order for them to become a satisfied, trust, trustful, a trustworthy person in themselves. So just only imposing my, uh, my virtue on others doesn't do any good for other people. But is it necessary that I have to be honest within, within myself? Yes, it is. It is absolutely necessary, but it doesn't mean that the people have been educated in the same message that I have educated myself in it, and I became a worthy man or trustworthy man, honest man. So the message, teaching the message is very important. Look, the conclusion of the uh, verse 84 says, uh, Oh my Lord, so I, I have hastened unto you, oh my Lord, so that you might be well pleased with me. No, you might be well pleased with my community, it should be. That's what we are going to learn now. All right. Now let's come here. So, Verse 85 says, he said, we have put your people on trial in your absence and Samaritan has led them astray. Samaritan? Who's that? What is that? I've never seen anyone who's called Samaritan here. So the, our subject is this, the Samaritan of our age. Now, if People trust the believers as a good man, which we hear nowadays that majority of the Muslims are good people. Okay, 
especially in the United States, they say, they are majority of them are good, but some of them are really terrorists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But very few of them. So they, as if they, uh, they are really respecting Islam. No, no. They know that the Muslim people are innocent people. They don't harm anyone. They are trying to uh, obey and follow the laws of this country, and they never rebel. They are obedient citizens of this country. They know that. Everybody knows that. They have no doubt about it. But it doesn't mean that they are convinced about the content of the teachings of Islam. That's what we have to do. Yes, we have to be honest people. We have to be uh, law-abiding people because it is our covenant. I am the citizen, the citizen of this country, so I have to obey the law. Otherwise, I have to go out. If I'm not going to follow the law, it means my covenant with this state, with the authority. So the Quran emphasizes on keeping the covenant with anyone, whoever signed, whatever you sign your contract with, you have to do the job you promise. That is what Allah says, Allah asks us. So we are good people, but it doesn't mean that we have conveyed the message to them. It doesn't mean that. We have to do this side of the responsibility as well. So Samaritan, Who's the Samaritan? Let's see what he did so that we will. Uh, mm, no, it is too early, I think. Okay. Let's follow the uh, sequence of the verses. Let's see what the Samaritan represents here. So Samaritan is the one who estrayed people, benefited from the lack of the education in the content of the message, exploited it. He didn't deny the concept of God because they were sure about the concept of God. So uh, as the prophet uh, is narrated to have said that uh, after I go, it would, after I die, I am not really afraid of that you will not believe in God. That is one of the hadith narrations of the prophet. I'm not afraid of that you are not going to, be, you are not going to leave aside the belief in God, but you will be immersed in the benefits of this world. It means not really use this world and connect yourself to the creator of the world, but aim, your ultimate aim will be to obtain the material benefits of this world. That is what I am afraid of. That is exactly what, we, uh, what is narrated in this narration of the people of Moses or the people of uh, the children of Israel. So what happened there in the example of children of Israel? Of course, we are reminded that we shouldn't be the same, in the same position. The Samaritan is the one who replaces the message of the prophet and diverts it, corrupts it, doesn't really clearly say or straight, uh, openly say that, oh, uh, Moses was a, uh, wasn't employed by God or wasn't supported by God and there is no God. No, the Samaritan represents a figure an understanding that believes in God and says Moses was a right man, the prophets was a right man. Religion is a good thing. Samaritan says, you know this, uh, those people who know 
what's going on in the world. They say, religion is good. People are good. Prophets are the, the very good men, very successful men. They are very honest men. They really help the society to develop, to progress, to become better societies. But the content of the message the prophets present to the people is ignored. That is why we shouldn't be misled by the people's understanding that the Muslims are good people. Oh yeah, they, they appreciated us. Yes, that is necessary though. We cannot say that, oh, it's not important really. That is necessary. But it is not enough. It is not sufficient. So we have to teach the content. So Samaritan is an alternative idea to the ideology, to the message of the prophets. And although outwardly accepting their concepts, but inside is totally corrupt. That's what, uh, let's see what happened here. And verse 86 says, Moses returned to his people in a state of anger and sorrow. sorrow. He said, oh my people, didn't your Lord make a wonderful promise to you? Did the promise seem too delayed to you? Did you desire that condemnation should descend on you from your Lord so that you broke your promise to me? Now, of course, their promise was to, the, to Moses that they will follow him. Yes, they will follow him personally, not his message. That is important. Another uh, aspect of this matter is important for our practical life. We may love the prophet. We say, okay, Muhammad is the messenger of God. Muhammad is my beloved prophet. I love him. He was the best man. He was the most honest man. Okay. Is it enough? No. Why not? The, the main purpose of loving the prophet must be getting engaged with his message and educating, training yourself through his message. Not only loving the person, respecting the person. No, the message, message is important. Of course we have to love, of course we have to respect, but message. So what the Mo Moses says, he was angry with them. Now, he said, oh, my people, didn't your Lord make a wonderful promise to you? What is the promise? Promised land. What is the promised land? Look, you are enslaved in this world. But I am promising you a land where you will feel absolute freedom, enjoyment for your life. You will be free from any oppression in that land. Of course, nowadays that land is called Palestine. <laughs> I mean, according to the Quran, what the Quran promises, and we will see which one is really the promised land, whether how it is understood nowadays in political arena. Palestine is the promised land. Quran says the promised land is paradise, where everything is provided by God. 
You are not enslaved by anything else. God set you free to enjoy all what you need. That is promised land of a believer according to teachings of the Quran. Now, this wonderful promise to the people and Moses gets angry. Isn't that promise enough for you so that you left my message? And instead of following my message, you started following the message of something else. Samaritans, we will see what the Samaritan did. Okay, did the promise, did the promise seem too delayed to you? It means, oh man, I will live in this world for how many years and then I will die and then I will be resurrected after my life in the grave and then I will be given paradise. It is too far away from my need now. Because we don't see the beauty, the taste, the pleasure of the message in our life now because we are connected to a person rather than the message. So my personal relationship with another person is at the material level, bodily level, not my training, my satisfaction in my feelings, human feeling. So promise is about the message, what the content of the message which says, the paradise will be yours. Now you will be saved from being a slave of this world, this material needs of this world. Everything will be taken care of by God now. You don't have to work for it. God is promising you paradise. Paradise means everything you need, you wish, you imagine will be given to you because all these needs, wishes, imaginations are given to you by your creator. These are the promises of your creator that he will satisfy all these. But if only you put your trust in him alone, but nothing and nobody else. Of course, we will experience it when we understand the reality, truthfulness of this promise within our human life, human feelings, but in our bodily life, we still have to do the work required by the order of this universe. Well, that's what we have to work here. But at the same time, our spirit will be always with the one who creates everything as a result of our endeavor, our labor in this world. Because we cultivate the land, but the harvest is created by God, not is created by me. I have to cultivate the land, the harvest, whatever the produce that I am expecting, will be created by God. But I have to work here. But the God promises that, look, if you don't think that the land, your labor, the means what is going on in this world, water, soil, etc., are satisfying you, but it is me who is the creator of the universe, is creating everything for you and is satisfying you, then your heart will be satisfied with the promise of paradise, but your body will be working in the field by cultivating it. But my satisfaction my way of satisfying you will be given to you by me in the promised land in paradise. 
So wait for it. But you have to train yourself, get ready to deserve the paradise. So that it is, it is your understanding, it is your training, it is your conviction by studying the message. yet. So he should not leave the people alone saying that, okay, they trust me, I may go and look at my own responsibility before God. You cannot do that. You have to train them, educate them with the message. Did the, prom did the promise seem too delayed to you? It means, oh, you, don't you think that the creator will keep his promise to you, of course, you will have the evidence. And in order to have the evidence, you have to study, educate yourself in the teaching. Did you desire that condemnation should descend on you from your Lord? Because if you, if you really uh, don't, trust your uh, don't trust your God that he will promise he will keep his promise because he can do it so uh, that is that, that is translated as Condemnation. So what does it mean? Condemn, why God? It is interesting to understand this kind of language as if God is an angry God. God is getting angry with me. And he, he is doing something extra to, to me more than what I deserve by myself, as if God is getting angry with me. No, everything is going on and taking place within me. I want something. If I don't see that this desire of mine will be satisfied by my creator, what I will do inevitably, I will try to satisfy myself by my own effort, my own labor, try to satisfy myself rather than acknowledging that I am asking God, he is satisfying me. If I don't see this change, the switch of the attitude, rather than see seeing that I am the one who satisfies me or it is God who satisfies me. I am just asking him to give whatever I need. Acknowledge that he is the creator. I am the one who is demanding him from him to create what I need in this world, in the conditions of this world. Now in paradise, it will be given straight away because I have already trained my spirit to deserve this treatment from my creator. So that when I go to the universe, to the next creation, when I am created in the next creation, when I am taken into, into, uh, into another creation, then in that creation, my God will fulfill his promise here that he gave me in my feelings in the in the form of needs so if i try to satisfy myself how much i can satisfy myself by myself i can accumulate the property i can accumulate the material means of satisfaction but for how long and how much the more the more I own, 
the more fear of lose invades my spirit. I'm going to lose all of them because I cannot guarantee to keep them. I will lose at the end everything I gained in this world. That's, that is how I feel. Ghadab, which is translated here as condemnation of God, is in the way that God creates human feelings within this uh, constraint, within this, uh, how do you say it, maybe limitations that um, confinement that I am trying to satisfy myself, but as I, as I think I am satisfying, it is gone. As I think I am really taking pleasure of my day today, it is gone in the evening. I cannot keep it anymore. It is gone. That is the loss of the pleasure causes pain. Fear of the loss of the pleasure also causes pain. If a person doesn't trust in God, what does he do? He trusts his own neighbor, his own property, his own uh, money, for example, or his own fame. But how long I can keep my fame? Every day I am losing it. Every day I am losing it. Of course, when I lose the day or the properties or the pleasure of the day, it is gone into yesterday, gone. I feel the pain. And also my imagination works with me. I know that, for example, I will enjoy my life tomorrow as well. Okay, get pleasure from it. But my imagination says, no worry, it will go away and leave you alone as today is leaving you alone. I know that. It is really a fact of my reality here. Can I escape from it? No. That is what, how the universe is created, how the order of the universe is created, how the order of human feelings work. And through these feelings, through this, the way of the universe works or established in this, within this order, I feel the condemnation of God in my own behavior if I don't trust in God, if I trust in my own earnings, gains. That is the condemnation I experience within myself. That is how the universe has been created. So, let's see the uh, you broke your promise to me because the, the, uh, the misunderstanding is there. When we say that I trust in somebody, for example, as these people said, we trusted you and you, we followed you and we passed through the, through the sea uh, under your guidance. And we trust you. You are a trustworthy man. So I may say, I trust somebody. I trust the prophet Muhammad, etc. Or people say, uh, some other people say, I tr we trust in Jesus. Okay. Trusting in Jesus saves you from the worries of this world. No, you have to go through the teachings of his message. We have to do the same thing. So promising the, uh, breaking the promise, our promise, 
with the prophet is always possible if I don't educate myself. Come here, what happens? Let's see now. When they, they said, we didn't break the promise to you of our own accord. Oh, we didn't mean it. Come on. We didn't reject you as our leader. It wasn't our will. So what happened? We were burdened with the weight of the people's ornaments. Oh, what is that now? What is the burdens of the people's ornaments? The scholars have many different interpretations of these people's ornaments. Uh, mean, they interpret in a, in a way that uh, or doesn't appeal to me. Some of them, not all of them, of course, some of them, but some of them interpret in the in the way that uh, it really uh, makes sense to me, and I, I confirm it, and I'm satisfied with it. I'll share what I say. Yes. The ornaments, the beauty of this world. The beauty of this world is very charming, very appealing. If I have something new that I liked, or as, as, I, as far as I say, oh, that is my ideal, that, that uh, understanding, being attracted by the beauty of anything of this world for the sake of itself. What do I mean by it? I mean, this is a beautiful thing that I can have it, whatever it is. Or oh, this is, let's say, a machine, for example, an iPhone. That's the last model of the iPhone. You, I may say, ah, that is it. There is no better than this one. There is no better than this one. So, okay. I, I, I feel that I am satisfied with it. That's what I, that attraction took us away from following your, you, your message. That is what, it wasn't uh, because we meant not to follow you. So we cast them into a fiery furnace as suggested by Summary, what does it mean? They are, what are they going to do with it by casting them into the furnace? They combine all the different loves of this world. Some people love of the beauty of, oh, I don't know, the house. Some people love the beauty of the cars and maybe family members, maybe clothing, maybe his own or her own beauty decorations or whatever uh, the job that they, or the profession they have or being proud of being an engineer, a doctor or architect or whatever, a famous man, a great, uh, for example, poet or singer, different kinds of attractions of this world were put into a pot, summary, suggested that look samiri now the samaritan samaritan is what is the idea what kind of ideology samaritan represents look everybody should enjoy whatever they like so that we will work all together together in order to satisfy everybody's needs as they want. So let us have a flourishing economy. Let's have a perfectly working political system, administrative system. Let's have a secure society by establishing a firm uh, security uh, agents, the police or the army. 
let's have the best weapons in order to secure the uh, nation's nation, the people's security, so that no one could challenge us. So at the end, we will have a perfect life in this world. All the ornaments, beauties that uh, that are attracted, uh, attracting us uh, to uh, to them, so that we will uh, we will all together have a best society or nation in the world. Let's work together. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't work in this world for a better, uh, in order to better our life, but ultimate aim is this they put all of them combined all of them in a pot and made a calf an idol it means the idol of this society is what self-satisfaction individuality individual uh, how, how do I say this individuality? No one can ever criticize me. No one can ever say against my expectations. No one uh, really interfere into my personal life. For example, in this, uh, nowadays in this, uh, in this culture, in this civilization, don't ask any personal questions. You have no right to inter right to interfere into my personal life. That is my that's my life. I should do whatever I want. No one can give me an advice. Oh man, receiving receiving an advice from other people is the heaviest heaviest thing to do. No. Who are you that you are giving advice to me? I know the best by myself. I don't need any, any advice. That is what egocentric understanding of human uh, private life, personal life, this individu individuality, the putting my individu individual being into the center of my world, and that is my ivory tower no one can enter here that is what samaritan civilization suggested us nowadays so everybody will be free and happy within his own personal life and that is how the community uh, Prosperity will take will happen at the end. Everybody will follow his best to perfect his benefit, so that the community benefit will be higher and higher and developing. That is what the mentality of the civilization is nowadays. I am of course bringing this news of the verse into our real life conditions, living conditions. So uh, that is what Sam, Sam, Samaritan suggested us. We, all the people brought their own ornaments of this world, not the ornaments of, the, uh, of, of God, acknowledging the source of the beauty who is really uh, going to provide the satisfaction, uh, a life which is decorated with ornaments, not me, but my creator. I will just ask him, if I, I myself try to, if myself, I myself try to satisfy my own expectations, that's what I, uh, Samaritan, will lead me now to this end and that's what i am i'm am going to be following an idol yeah what the idol will do now instead of uh, 
God of Moses, now what the God of Samaritan, this civilization which doesn't listen to the message of the prophets and exploits people's weak points about loving to satisfy themselves within this life only. So he produced for them, now verse 88, he produced for them the image of a calf. It seems to move, makes noise. Oh, they said, this is your God. And the God of Moses, look, replacing God and bringing God on earth. Now, God of Moses is the, is the God who is the absolute being, and he is the source of existence of everything. He is transcendental one. We cannot really identify him with anything here. But, they, uh, but the Samaritan civilization says, here is your God in the form of a calf, but this calf makes noise on the moon. He doesn't, the calf doesn't speak, makes noise like animal. So this is your God and the God of Moses. Ah, in fact, Moses' God is this as well because he said he is going to bring the promised land, pleasure. Here is the pleasure made out of your ornaments, your false gods, your false expectations of satisfaction from this world. But Moses has forgotten it. What does it mean? Because Moses was living in the palace and the palace was full of pleasures of this life only without God. The Pharaoh's palace, can you imagine? Everything is possible there as far as this world is concerned, but not as far as the satisfaction of human expectations, no, the bodily expectations. So the calf, we have to be careful about this nature of this calf and also making a noise of a animal, boo. Yeah, we have to huar, which is very, very, you know, the, the noise made by animals. Now see, the calf makes them, it means this uh, Samaritan God has the nature of animality and satisfies the animal side of human beings not human side of human, human beings. It means my spirit, need of my spirit for eternal satisfaction. It is, this calf is very important, the Samaritan calf that we have to be very careful. Samaritan, uh, Samaritan God. Made out of my own images, my own expectations from this world, my own ideals in this world, rather than my connection with God and uh, expecting his promise to be fulfilled by him, I am going to fulfill my expectations in this world with my own neighbor and with my own expectations. That is the ornaments of people. Out of these ornaments of people, what can you make? You can make a God which satisfies your animality, speaks to your animality. Whereas Moses' God speaks with word that you and I can understand and get the message for, my, for the needs of my message. That is the difference between Really, Moses of God, Moses is God and Samaritan God. Samaritan God says, I am going to give you your dreams. You know, we are going to satisfy the American dream here. What do you want? A perfect house for myself. Okay. And a perfect car for myself. And also other holidays for me, for my family, etc. And a lot of money in my bank account. That is what this civilization promises you. That is what all the nations of the world now 
are striving for this end, economic, technological, and militarily development, economic progress, military power, increase of the military power. What is going on? What is going on? In order to satisfy my bodily needs, what is missing? My intellectual satisfaction, my spiritual satisfaction, then seeing that all the feelings in me will be satisfied by the one who created them within me. Not by me. I cannot satisfy my, for example, expectations of eternal happiness. No one, no one and nothing can satisfy my expectations of eternal happiness. That's why we have to be very careful about the distinction between what the prophet's promised land is, what the Samaritan's God is. One of them is made up of human weak points, human worldly concerns. The other one is a promise from the creator of human spirit. Which one we should follow? Which one really satisfies me? We have to learn from this story now. Look at the world and everybody will see the difference. Every nation is making another kind of calf out of their worldly concerns. It means the ornaments of this world not the, the meaning of this world, but these temporary ornaments of this world and neglecting the prophetic message, although we claim to believe in God, we love the prophet, he is and we are proud of the prophet being a trustworthy person, trustworthy person, yes, he was. Yes, he must be a messenger, must be trustworthy, but this is just an invitation. This is not the end of the story. We think that when we celebrate the birthday of the prophet, we love and then we make lots of uh, songs and uh, bitunis, etc., whatever the people uh, make, uh, nasheed, they call it. Uh, praising the prophet is just the beginning, is not the end. We have to love the prophet in order, well, we have to trust the prophet. That is the main point, main message that we learn from today's study. We have to love the prophet, but it is just a beginning. Not, for example, registering, enrolling with the school. It is not the education. Enrolling the school, loving the school, and loving to become an engineer is it doesn't or doesn't make you an engineer. You have to study and learn. So loving the prophet is necessary, but not at all sufficient, as the example demonstrated us in the example of the story of Moses. That is how we should read the prophetic stories, actually, apply to our present day living conditions. Thank you. Inshallah, we have to stop here. Let me see if there is any chat. No one spoke. Okay. Bismillah rahman rahim Inshallah, I will see you next Wednesday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim wa akhru da'wahum and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Thank you for joining.